This is Mike West Jenkins, and in my past uh, YouTube videos, I've shown you very precisely how WDGAN used to trade, particularly intraday using the astrological methods and uh, numerological cycles. Uh, but I've uh, noted in your comments that many of you thought this was uh, pretty advanced stuff and you didn't quite understand it. So I thought I would spend a little time this morning um, talking about a very simple trading methodology where you can make 500 or a thousand dollars a day with very little work and you don't need uh, much experience and uh, it's based on the GAN philosophy of traders of numbers and time cycles. If you're not familiar with who I am, I've been a day trader for uh, 53 years now and counting. I've uh, worked in the entire industry in bank trust departments. I ran three different mutual funds. I was highly ranked in the U.S. as that. I did 15 years of uh, television appearances. I was a stockbroker, commodity broker, hedge fund manager, proprietary trader for many specialist firms and day trading firms. I have undergraduate degrees in business and economics, uh, MBA. MBA, CPA, CFA, all sorts of professional licenses. I have also uh, worked with many uh, great traders and uh, many fake traders. I've known dozens of individuals who have gone from rags to riches, making uh, well over a million dollars from nothing. And I've also seen 80% uh, of those individuals give all the money back and lose it all once the market changes characteristics because their methods only worked for particular patterns they were familiar with. The breakouts eventually failed, moving averages changed, or oscillators became too overbought or oversold. Also be aware that individual traders have personal cycles, just like uh, stocks do, uh, both bull and bear market periods. And if you don't know the principles of trading, you will lose very heavily when your personal cycles turn. Now what I do not use, I don't use candlesticks, I don't do moving averages, I don't use VWAPs, I don't use oscillators or 99% of all the software tools out there. I only use simple bar charts, trend lines, circles and retracement grids. That's all you really need to trade if you have nice charting software that draws a good picture. Um, I would say that the, I know many people who use these methods and I'm not berating them. Uh, they've made millions of dollars with these methods at times, but a lot of people would treat the market as if it's a video game and they've uh, hot keyed all their uh, computer keys and they buy and sell and buy and sell and they look at their red and green bars and they go crazy buying every day and it works for a while and some make a lot of money, but I wouldn't go down that road. I'll show you why. Uh, here's a typical thinker-swim chart. Thinker-swim is used by a lot of traders. I see a lot of videos who are using it, and this is typical. You've got your red and green candlesticks, and you've got uh, some Bollinger Bands on it, and there's a 9-day and a 200-day moving average and a VWAP. And um, the reason I don't use these things is because they're all based on statistics. Uh, which you know, I'll get into that in a second. But also note the the red and green bars can tell you uh, misdirect you quite a bit. For instance, this is one big giant downtrend all the way down from this high all the way to that low. And yet there are periods of times it looks like there's an uptrend here with the green bars. And then you go down, there's a breakdown bar, and then there's a buy signal. And though you can use these judiciously, many times it will confuse the subconscious mind with the red and the green bars giving you a uh, stop and go. And I don't, I don't think that's a, a really a, a needed when you're trading. It takes your eye off the individual chart too much. As I said, those are all based on statistics. Statistics are not based on principles, but they're averages of prices over certain uh, time periods. When the market changes its momentum and character, it can take time for the statistics to catch up. But principles never change, and they work in all markets and on all trading platforms and all instruments throughout all the time. I only teach principles in what I do and what I trade with every day. The principles work, and they work all the time if you use them correctly. So what are the primary principles? 
Well, I just look at the individual bar chart. I look at the size of the bar. I look at reversals in the bar. I look at fundamental numerology. I look at time periods and time frame persistences. Volume uh, I sometimes look at, but it's very misleading because there's a lot of synthetic stock that's created with options and futures. If you've ever noticed on days when you're trading a stock, it might be 100.25, and then suddenly you'll see a price of 100.256 or something. They, they split it down to three decimals because you can't get between the bid and the ask on the New York Stock Exchange stock. So what they do is they cross option trades on regional exchanges and they split the price. But you won't see that in your volume. There may be a 500,000 share block of stock crossing and that volume won't show up. So the volume is very misleading and it doesn't really uh, show up in your VWAP either, even when these big giant blocks are crossing. So it, it can be really misguided by using. Here we have a typical bar chart. And uh, whether this is a tick chart, one minute chart, five minute, 60 minute, uh, daily, weekly, monthly, it's all the same. We know where it opens and where it closed. So we know the trend on each bar. This trend was down, opened here, closed down there. Now these bars are strung together on our charts, but the important thing to learn is you can't just draw a trend line on these bars. The basic trend is a pattern, and I emphasize pattern. An uptrend has higher highs and higher lows. A downtrend has higher, uh, lower highs and lower lows. And this is the pattern. The reason you have to understand it's a pattern is let's say you have a weekly chart declining like this. It may take a whole week before it starts to turn up. But if within the weekly chart you have an hourly chart that is making a bullish pattern, then that will lead to a daily chart pattern and then that can turn your weekly chart. So you can actually get in on a weekly chart time frame near the exact low once you see the pattern change. The other most basic thing is the reversal bar signal. So no matter where you, what you think about the market and whether you've got the candlesticks and wicks and anything else, but the institutions who run the market up always trade on the bid side of the market. And the orders are on the bid side. They don't chase it up every day. And so at the final high bar, whenever you find the highest bar of the move, when the bid side disappears and it's done, it's exhausted. There's no more buyers and you get a reversal in trend when the high, uh, the low of the high bar is broken. That's your sell signal. Also on the way down, the institutions use limit orders. So even though you may have a big bar at the bottom and you may spend uh, several bars down here several weeks, um, there's usually a limit order up here to sell that you don't see. And so eventually they work their way through that limit order and when they get above the high of the low bar, you get a buy signal. Now, of course, this will happen quite frequently with one minute chart or five minute charts. Uh, but obviously when you get to the longer uh, term charts, the trends are longer. Now this is because of persistence of trends. That's the only reason technical analysis works because of cyclic activity in the market when the cycles turn there is a persistence of trends. Usually after reversal bars, the new trend goes in a Fibonacci number of bars, like 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34. So it's important to keep track of your time frames as a reversal on a one hour chart may see a trend for three to five hours, which is almost a full day of trading. Whereas a daily reversal is three to five days and a weekly is three to five weeks. There is no need whatsoever to keep watching every day for a reversal if the weekly or monthly charts are going in a new direction for three, five, or eight time periods. Now, when talking about time periods, there are cycles of time. And we call a cycle is another word for circle. In the ancient world, of course, everything was astrological. It went, the planets went around in a circle. And nature has a base number system of nine, not 10. We use a decimal system. 
nature everything is a nine this is why your circle has 360 degrees it doesn't have 100 degrees doesn't have 514 degrees it's 360 degrees there's a three and a six added together equals nine numerologically this is tesla's three six and nine which ruled the universe and the dna and everything else in life all natural breakpoints in the stock market our time and price breakpoints are nine reductions, like one and one are two, and two is four, and five is nine. Two and two are four, and five is nine. Four and five are nine. Here's a nine. One and three are four, and five are nine. All these numbers are nine reductions that are breakpoints in the market. We usually represent these time cycles as 360 degrees, and we have the classic Gan emblem here, or the picture of the Great Pyramid. And uh, it's a circle, and it's broken into a square of 90 degrees, and a trine of 120 degrees. Now we can break these down further and take half of the square at 45, or break the trine down into 60 degrees. But these are your basic harmonics of time in your circle. When we look at the WD GAN method of trading, we will find all these charts that he has like this. And they are circular charts that are broken up into the square and the trine. In this case, he's got a circle of 1 to 24 hours because he's using an hourly chart. And the Earth, if you've seen my prior uh, video on the GAN intraday trading, uh, you know that the Earth moves 15 degrees every hour. Or in 24 hours, it moves 360. So each hour here is represented by a series of number. And we can also use the annual cycle of March uh, 20th, 21st, first day of spring is the start. And then you go up into June, down into the fall, and into the winter. And then you have these trine points too. And so there's a relationship of time uh, and these angles and numbers. And these will be harmonics during the course of the year. If your high or low wasn't on March 20th uh, and it was over here, you would just move your square points over and your trine points over. But these would be various frequencies. Here's a more familiar chart, which is the GAN square of 9. And he's got another layout here. Again, it starts on March. He's got the March over here, and he's going up April. But the June is always has to be on the top, no matter which way you go out. You start at 1, and 2 goes out to the month of March, and you spiral up into June, down into the fall. In this particular case, he's got the um, your cardinal cross which is the big cross and then there's a fixed cross which is your x's through here but he's also got the 22 and a half degree angles so like from one level here this is 22 and a half degrees this would be 45 degrees this would be 6750 and this would be 90 degrees so he's basically got number cycles that are broken up into 22 and a half degree cycles now hang with me for a minute and we'll get right into the charting and the trading and get done with this theory. But you'll see a lot of the GAN stuff like this where he's got a square of 144 or a square of 90 or a square of 52. And what all he's doing is getting the harmonics of these key numbers. If you went over, let's say, 144 weeks and up $144 or something. Uh, then we can see that he's dividing that time period in half with the diagonal, and then he's taking a midpoint, he's taking a one-quarter point, he's dividing it down. And so all these little angles and things he's got is nothing more than finding these fulcrum points of energy, which are harmonics of a particular time period. So as stocks go up along your various angle slopes, they will gravitate to these various positions. And he used that for trading, uh, basically on a piece of paper, because he didn't have computers back in his day. It makes it much easier the way we're going to do it. So what we're going to do is very simple. It breaks down to the harmonics of 360, the degrees of a circle. Now you can divide 360 by 2. If you divide 360 by 2, you get 180. 
divide that by 2, you get 90. Divide that by 2, 20, 45, 22 and a half, 11 and a quarter, 5 and 5 A's, 2.8125. Or you could divide by the trine, the 3's. So 360 divided by 3 is 120. Divided by 2 is 160. And then 30, 15, 7 and a half. And then we note that there are several angles in here that are doubly strong. So like seven and a half and fifteen or twenty-two and a half, eleven and a quarter twice or twenty-two and a half, thirty and fifteen here are forty-five, um, uh, eleven and a quarter and thirty-three, forty-five. So these these numbers are both in there. And note that these are your square of uh, a nine, uh, uh, twenty-two and a half degree uh, cycles. Remember over here we had these angles he was putting on. Here's a 22 and a half and another 22 and a half and another 22 and a half and another 22 and a half. But they add up to here's a 45 and here's a 90. Here's a 135. Something like that. So all trading is going to come out of these divisions. You're going to find that the stock itself is going to be at the price. If you had a stock at 56 and a quarter, it would react to that. Or if it moved these distances. If you had a stock at 30 and it moved up 11 and a quarter and it was now a 41.25, you would get resistance then. So all trading basically comes off of this. All time and price harmonics that we'll be trading will be these divisions. So that prior chart I just showed you, you should copy that down and put that over your, uh, your uh, computer where you're trading every day. And uh, you'll, you'll see all these harmonics work and you'll memorize them after a while what these uh, divisions are. Okay, so our last theoretical idea is this. Uh, Pythagorean, uh, Pythagoras used to talk about the relationship of an angle to exhaustion in a quadrant circle. And uh, we have found that the angle of lift in the price uh, has relationship to numbers. For instance, if you go up along a 30 degree angle, like this angle is here, you will have time and price harmonics of 7 and a half, 15, and 30. Here we have a price, at, uh, it's going up along a 30 degree angle. And so seven and a half points later is your first hesitation and seven and a half and weeks is this time period. Then you go out 15 weeks and you're up $15 at the price level. And then the final high is over here at 30 weeks and you're up $30. So there is this relationship of time and price along the 30 degree angle. And this, by the way, is just the square of nine uh, from one rung to the next rung, as you know, is the square root plus two. So this one also works that way. So the only question is, of course, is when you're down here at this low, how do I know it's going up on a 30 degree angle? You know, why don't I use a 45 degree angle? Well, to find that out, all we do is just look the first increment. So uh, if we have an increment of uh, 2.81 or up 5 or up 11, these are all the 45 degree angles. If your stock is going up 3.75 or these increments, these are 30 degree angles. So if you had a, a $20 low and the first little resistance is at 25 and 5 ace, so that's your 25 and 5 ace, that would be a 45 degree slope. If you're at $20 and you stop at 375, then you're going up along a 30 degree angle. So these would be the angles that would be relevant. Now when we trade stocks, we find these common denominators all the time. Here's an E-mini chart of one minute, and I show a lot of one minutes to show how precise these things are. Here's a 33 and three quarters, which is one of those common numbers, and from the low to the high it was 33 and three quarters. Most of these little plunges here are five and five ace. This little plunge here was twice that. It was 11 and a quarter. On this chart, we see a bunch of 15 degree multiples. From here to here was 15 degrees. It broke under that. That was now the high. Then it went down 30 points on the day. And then that was resistance. And finally, the final low of the entire day was 45 points exactly down from the high tick. And note also, it was exactly here, like five hours. 
often uh, you'll have these big brokerage firms send their teams out and say we're going to be selling for two hours and then we'll buy them for an hour and then we'll sell them for two and you often get these things exactly to the minute of where the highs and lows come out because they have these teams of buy and sell orders that are being adjusted here we have a uh, e-mini where it started today and it went up exactly 56 and a quarter exact number and then you start a big decline and the first part of the big decline down was 45 points. Then you had a decent rally, but it didn't take out the prior top and it's still going down. So ultimately, the big final drop was exactly 90 points. And then you had a vicious rally that was just about 45 points. So these are the same uh, figures you'll see all the time. Longer term moves are just the bigger increments. Here's oil. It looks like a funny number, 62, probably 62 and a half or three quarters. But uh, 62, uh, 43 at the low, plus 67.50 was your high, 130. Here's a uh, 116 price, minus 22 and a half is your low. Here's a 123, minus 52 and a half was the low over here. Now here's how I make my money every day. Here's like a five minute chart of Exxon. So let's say you're following Exxon, you got some trend lines or something and it suddenly gaps down here. So you know there's a little breakdown. So normally on these trading stocks, you can decide what is your increment. It's going to be three and three quarters, 2.8125. On the big trading stocks, it's often five and five ace. So often what I'll do is I'll go down five and five ace and draw a circle. And that circle will kind of define the trend, and that gives me a low at exactly five and five ace points down. And then as soon as I get a tiny little reversal bar, I'll go long. Maybe I buy options in here. Then we start to fade, and as we start to see lower highs and lower lows in the pattern, I'm going to predict a target price down five and five ace lower, and you get right down to there. The big, uh, the big turns, especially on the hourly e-minis and things, are just bigger things. If you've been going up for a week or two or so and you top out on the S&P, um, you often go down a full 360 points. That would be your big drop, 360. First way down, you might look for 180 or so. Here we got to 180, you blew through it, and it was the top for a little while. You went a little lower, then you went up, hit the trend line, and failed. From this top here, you went down 270. And then that tied in basically with your 360 over here. And then you start a long-term cycle going up. Now, your big option trades are just like this. Here's Tesla on a 15-minute chart. From the major high here all the way down to the low was exactly 45 points. The low here to this big rally was exactly 11 and a quarter points. From this low right here, right to the top, 22 and a half. Okay, from the big low up to this little gap area up, 33 and three quarters. Then from here down to here, 30 points. So as you get to these areas, you look to buy or sell, and you look for that reversal bar, and that's where you make your trades. Remember, all these numbers just come right off this chart, whether it's 11 and a quarter, 22 and a half, 45, 30. Just cut this out and memorize these numbers. You're going to see them all day long. Now, again, I like to look at everything in circular fashion. So this is really that last chart I showed you of all the harmonic breakpoints, 22 and a half, 45, 67. That's what this really is. Remember, these angles here are like every 22 and a half degrees. So basically, if you had a stock here at 411, it might go up to the 22 and a half increment right here. And then it would go to the 45 increment right here. And then it would go over to here. And then it would go over here. If you trade, uh, let's say, Microsoft here at 371. All the big institutions have this GAN cardinal cross. They take it from 371 up to 381. If you break 371, then you're going to go down here and go to, uh, to uh, 361 and then to 352. And so they bounce around these various numbers at these 22 and 45 degree harmonics, just like we've seen. 
Now we've been talking about the increments of 360 in numerological 45, 22 and a half, 11 and a quarter. In my day trading for 50 years book, I show what, what the universal method is. Not all stocks will be exactly 45 and 60 and 30 and 15. They'll be oddball numbers. So any stock can find its individual vibration by just taking a vector uh, analysis here. Draw a vector of a high to a low and then the vertical will be the maximum size that that stock can go to before going up another whole leg and then the maximum time period it will take to get there. So you can divide your, your things up into various unique time and prices. And in, to, in this book, I introduced the idea of the octave system. Now, if you take a, a circle with a radius, note that you can inscribe a square around it. And the perimeter is based on basically eight lengths of the radius. So we get this idea of the octave. So this is how we use it. Here's a one minute SPX, and this is good. I use this every day on those DTE options you wanna trade all the time on a one minute uh, cash chart. So we take a low, and since it's a one minute chart and I'm doing small increments, I'll take a small increment like this, 2.8125, that's half of five and five eighths. And so I'll add that to my low, and then I'll draw a big line across at that price. And then I'll take just one of these uh, expander tools like most, uh, most of you have on your software. You'll have either a Fibonacci retracement thing or a one eighth retracement thing, but you'll have some kind of retracement grid. And I always set mine to eight units. And then if we stretch it and put the first of those eight units at our fixed line, then we're going to have the same uh, 2.8125 at each one of these levels. And we can see the market bounces around and these become our support and resistance. And at the end of the octave, we have our first big top or at least a consolidation before another leg up. Now what we like to do is add a time component to the price component. We have our 1 8 levels up. And uh, in order to turn a 1 8 level sideways into time, we can use a 45 degree angle. And where that intersects, that will be a time cycle. When it's the next level up, that's your time cycle. The next level up, that's a time cycle. Next level up, that's a time cycle. Or we can just take a circle. A circle drawn like this will give you the time cycle because remember from 9 o'clock to 12 is a 45 degree angle or from 12 down to 3 is a 45 degree angle. So instead of drawing this, you can just draw a circle and then at the end of this, we know the 45 will intersect that top point. And then we put on a little cycle finder tool and just stretch it out that and we get a cycle turn here and a cycle turn there and a cycle turn there and a cycle turn there. So suddenly we have lots of little cycle turns. They're off a little bit, but this is a one minute chart and you have some discretion in where you make your trade. But basically this puts time and price together. Another way of looking at the time and price instead of just little squares is circular measure. So if we were to go up to each level and draw a circle, we now have circular measure which describes support and resistance all the way through here. And we can find out that there is resistance that it can break out of. And then we notice, I say electron valence rings, it's like an atom and there's certain energy where they have to uh, gap through a level. When you have a gap in the market, it's the same. So from rung number six to rung seven, there's a big gap. Well, Note that at the cycle length number six and number seven, you have your exact high and your exact low. No need for a moving average or a VWAP or anything else. You know exactly where these cycle turning points are going to be. They form the gap going vertical is now the gap going sideways. When we run out of cycles like this, we can just uh, extend them out. We can go out to our eighth rung over here and we can go backwards. We can run a rung this way and that's going to come down through here. And then we can go to the second one in and run another rung and then third one in and another one. And you see these guys give us cycle turns too. And they'll also describe support and resistance where these arcs fall in between. 
Always remember, though, it's numerology, so from our low, keep count of your bars. This is the, the final high from the low to the high and then back down was exactly 360 bars. Half of that here would be like 180. Half of that would be like 90. Half of that would be like 45. So count your bars in these same breakpoint numbers. Here's an example on a big trading stock, Microsoft. And uh, on the big stocks, look at the, uh, the width of your bars every day. If, they're, if they move at three, five, eight points intraday, maybe you want a bigger increment. So here I'm using five and five ace as my first level increment. And then uh, this would be my octave. I stretch it up eight times. So at the end of the first octave, you have a top right here. And then I go to a second octave because it came back and exceeded that. So now I double that. An easy way of doubling it is just take your uh, one eighth grid again. And at the uh, top level here, you now level that off with the 50% over here. So at the second octave of up 90 points, um, it's a consolidation. So now we know we're going to go a third octave. And the third octave would be up 135 points from the low a 346.21. So all here is going to be your major resistance. If the truth be told, if you take the vertical distance of the octave here and turn it sideways, you'll usually get your length of time of the consolidation. And then as it goes up, the fourth octave here looks like uh, it could get to 391.21 uh, if it continues. Now a quick and easy way to do that last method, rather than count five and five ace and keep counting it on the thing, what you can do is at the five and five ace level, remember eight times five and five ace is 45. So you can just take your 45, you can one eighth grid, start at your low and move it up where the top price is 45 uh, points higher. So from the 4702, it goes up to, we stretch it up to 4747, and then we find out that each of our levels, you see, are exactly 5 and 5 ace, and the market respects them. It consolidates on them or bounces around them. You had uh, went through two, you plunge right on down, you hit this guy, you went right to that. So they will bounce back and forth to these exact levels. Now, if you get to a level like this and you go higher, then you quickly want to go over and do the next ladder up, which is double that. So instead of going up 45, we go up 90. And now we find out, even though it broke out above the 45, which we now expect might be support, maybe it's folding back like this, um, but it stops dead in its tracks at the 5 ace level of the next ladder up. Here's a blow up of that chart to see it a little bit better. And you can also see the, uh, the bounces exactly to these letters and where they, where they break out if you want to buy your uh, E-minis. And then here it is, what, the next level? Exactly to the penny, just about. Again, no need to use, uh, you know, color bars or moving averages or VWAPs or anything else. They go to the number. And if you know anything about trading and reversing in your trading, you know where to buy and sell on these things. Okay, so that's half the equation, support and resistance. Now we want to put on some angles to find time cycles in particular and look at momentum. Because the momentum and the angle tells us about how long the trend is going to persist. So let's find the natural angle. Let the chart tell us. So from this low to this high, <coughs> this is the angle doesn't matter what that slope is. It's not 45, 52, so I don't care. This is the slope that it's following. What we do now is we put our little grid angle on here. We go up our eight units over and tie it in with the slope. So the diagonal of this 1 eighth grid is our original slope. So now we can go down to the 1 half unit and get a 1 half angle measured off that first unique slope. So now we have our second angle and we put that on here. This is our two by one. And now we go and get our one quarter angle, which goes on here and that goes to the one quarter and we're going to put that down below. So now we have all three angles on here and they're going to guide us over the way as they're following these. When they break one angle, they go to the next angle down.
and then they break one and they go to the next angle down. Now we can do some interesting things. So some of the discoveries I've made in, uh, deal with these differences in time uh, and price. The price is vertical and the time is horizontal and it's angular. So we can take this measured move and do something with it. So here, after the top was made, we take this vertical distance, grab that little bar and drag it over here to these angles and put it over here. And that's our second top right there when the spacing is the same. Now we can also do something we can take from the top angle down to the angle here for that bigger size and we can slide that guy over here and it gives us this exact top here. Again, these are very precise things right to the day, right to the bar without any moving averages or anything else to look at except your bar chart. Now, the, the traditional way of looking at this, and then there's an important difference here. Normally, we go square the range. That would be from the low to the high. This is the range. And to square the range, we just draw a horizontal line. So when you get to the next angle, you're right over here. You've, you've gotten to the same range again on the second angle. And on the third one, as you continue over, you square it here. It looks like a little aberration here, but it's the same price. It's a little over 220 you know, right in here, a little over 220, but these are the same height. So if you go straight across to your angles, uh, you'll get these same square routes. But note the difference. What I was doing was the incremental ones. And so what will happen on the incremental ones, we'll get much better trades than when we just do it horizontal. Here's a typical case here where you have your three trend lines on the primary angle, the half angle, and the one quarter angle. And see, squaring the range, you go horizontally, you get a turn right there, and then you get a turn right over here. Also note, since these angles are very precise and unique, you can go up from one top, and that will give you future resistance right over here. Now this stuff works on any time frame. Here's the very long term one over a year and a half on the uh, S&P. So you get your primary angle and then your one half angle. You can square the range either this way or just take the vertical distance and then you'll get this big uh, giant turn in the market right there. But see what I do, which is very unique, is this. If you were just squaring the ranges you could draw a horizontal line and yeah, you get a turning point over here when you intersect that. Maybe you get a turning point here. And then what do you do? You're going across here. Uh, what do I do? Well, if we take the individual heights here and then we turn them into displaced heights, this one gives us a turn right there. And then this height right here, we drag up and it gives us that turn right there. I can also take these various angles here. Here's my two by one or my one by four angle, which is your true 45. And that one you see precisely caught the bottoms in here. And then I put that on the uh, bear market high and it gives me the next uh, bull market high right here. Here I didn't use the two by one. I used the three eighths by one um, only because it fit much better. You could actually turn this into like a GAN fan at all these levels, but usually you'll find the uh, four by one, two by one, and, and one by four work the best. The once in a while you get an oddball like this blue one, but since it fits so perfectly, I was using this for several years uh, going up. Again, it works on any stock or commodity. Here's a Tesla on a daily chart. We find the primary slope. Then we put on our little angle here and we can get the two by one and the uh, one by one. And they come up through here. And when you square the range, you get a big turn. You square the range over here. Not, not a big one there, but it was a good low drop. Um, the resistance above the low gives you future resistance. We can continue to square that top against our key trend line. It gives us the next top over there. Now, once our top is in, what do we do? Well, now we want to get our down angles. Well, all we do is we go back to our same angle going up. We put our little eighth grid on so it falls along the diagonal. And then we do the inverse. We do the opposite diagonal. 
and we drag that guy here and this is going to give us our slope of our decline when it squares the low you're going you're going to get the big uh, thing right there um and uh, that one is going to be uh, the same as if you went all the way up from the low to this top right here. And um, we can also uh, do it by my other unique method of uh, going from here to here under the high and take this distance right here and drag that up over here and measure down to the angle. And it gives us this one right here. We can also do the uh, uh, height of it under the high right there at that angle when that one comes over as support and also gives you a square root right here. So this is the use of the angles uh, both up and down. Finally, I have my uh, one minute chart that I trade around with every day. Uh, here's like a cash one if you're trading the uh, zero DTE uh, SPX options or something, use the cash market. So we have an angle, this is our primary angle, and then we put on our little grid to get our two by one angle and our one by one angle. And we can see that they're working, they're following that pretty well. Then we get a square out for a little bit of top over here. This one catches the low here and it goes up. This is your primary one by one. When it squares the high, you get the big top right here. And then it goes up, broke under it, hit its head on it, and then starts the big decline. Now, these angles will always be good because this is the unique angle on this price scale for for all your fluctuations. So now we drag these things around our chart. The next time we have a low, we put our red angle on here again and we get square outs there too. As that squares out this top line, you see you've got the low right here. And then we put on our two by one angle. That squared out really just gave you an acceleration. And then the final one by one that gave you support. And then when you squared out the top over here, you had the big blast off. And then when you get to the final high, all you do is to put the inverse angles on. We would put the, the diagonal on and the two by one on here, you know, to give you the, the targets on the downside. So you can move these things around all day long, minute by minute by minute with these slopes and get hundreds of turns. So in summary, that market is very mathematical, based on 360 usually, although you can use my circular methods to get a unique price and time. You don't need any statistics, no moving average, no oscillators, no red or green, nothing. Every level is exact. Uh, you use the cyclic turns for the big bets, as opposed to just uh, minor scalping at support and resistance. Keep your time frames up to date. Put this on all your one minute, on your 60 minute, your dailies. Uh, to get the bigger turns and also remember you can have a bad personal cycle and uh, that's why you always have to have a stop loss and learn to trade smaller if you go into a period where you start to lose or read the market backwards your personal pro cycle is probably uh, backwards for a while and I get a lot of comments I can't uh, really answer on these uh, YouTube videos. I say I get at least 150 emails every single day. I write a newsletter. I've written 12 books. I do uh, every night. I do uh, Skype seminars and private teachings. I just don't have the time to answer all the questions on YouTube videos. So please go to the website. Uh, that has a lot of the answers and pictures of the books and courses and everything else you may want to know. Um, these YouTube videos are really only meant to fill a public uh, a gap, a void in the knowledge about trading, especially for those people who uh, criticize me saying my books are too expensive for them. Well, if you're going to make $500 or $1,000 a day, believe me, you can afford some good information that are in these books. But I, I give you this information as is, and um, it's uh, quite valuable. Just as a final afterthought, this is one of the exhibits out of my newsletter, Stock Cycles Forecast. I usually put this in and keep it up. This is just using the square of nine with calendar days. So you start with your uh, origin point at the final high. And as you go through those various 22 and a half degrees and 45 and 90 degrees in calendar days, you get all these pivots. And we can see it works very well. And then I was running them from the bottom also. 
and they come over here and often you'll get these big turns that will come out on certain dates maybe a couple of them a days apart whereas some turns would be bigger than others so that's it for this outing um, good luck with your trading just uh, study these things uh, study the 360 multiples and I wish you a lot of success <laughs>